Good day, rail fans, and welcome back to Train Simulator with Electron. Today we'll be returning to Academy to learn to drive the Class 170 diesel multiple unit. Let's get started. So we're going to start out with selecting the right train first. Uh, we're going to start out with the primary controls. The, um, the interface for the for the on-screen display, the HUD should be the same. Um, but let's learn how to uh, drive it with the the actual controls. Well, we don't have Smugman back. All right. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to get the train moving, complete e each action after closing the messages. The camera will change view when each control is set correctly. All right, so we're going to get the train moving. Let's see, which one is the reverser? This one is the reverser. And what is this one? Train brake and throttle. Well, that's easy. Does the master key work? Okay, we want to put it in forward. We want this in notch number three. All right. Let's see. Is that three? There we go. Alright, looks like we've got this underway. Alright, you're on the move, now you can apply full power. Sweet! Let's get this puppy going. Let's see if I can remember my camera things. What am I doing wrong? Ah! Time to turn it to off because we can coast. What is this? Okay. Now we need to stop. For this, you need the brake. This train combines power and braking in the same controller. Push the throttle lever forward, beyond off, and into braking notch number two. There's one. There's two. I think. There we go. Those are some decent brakes. Alright, we've uh, completed the scenario successfully. Let's start the next one. We are going to learn the secondary controls. The Fowler was pretty interesting, but the controls were a little bit on the confusing side. Listen to that diesel engine. But I think the best uh, feature about the Fowler 4F was Smoke Man. Additional controls. Alright, we're going to turn on the headlights. Which... Is that that one? Clearly not doing the right thing. There we go. Alright, let's turn on the wipers. How bad's the room? Now I lost the wipers. Uh, here it is. And screen wipers. Alright. 
the horn. Got to know where the horn is. It looks like that's four different ways to go. Oh, don't in the scenario. I want to play with the horn some more. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, let's move on to refueling. All right. Here we go. Hey, there's the gas. Now let's figure out if we can... Let's see if we can figure out where we have to stop. You learn to refuel a diesel train, close each window to continue, and before carrying out instructions. Unless your train is electric, it needs fuel. This train needs diesel. Most trains carry enough fuel to get them through the day and fill up before they start work. All right. Before this train begins its duty, we need to fill the tank, pull forward, and stop next to the fuel pump. Okie dokie. Um, but first... Let's go out here. Is this the gas tank? I think it might be. All right. So we're going to... Oops. We're going to put the reverser into forward. And then we're going to put the throttle... In a very low... Okay. I'm going to do this very slowly and very, very carefully. Because when it's time to slam on the brakes, it's going to be time to slam on the brakes. Like that. There we go. And then we're going to switch to the external view 2 and click on the pump. Ooh. Let's uh, fly backwards with the down arrow. Alright. Looks like we got it lined up correctly and everything. And we're full. Sweet. Alright, what's next? Switching cabs. Alright, so... Let's get started. Alrighty. Uh-oh. We're going the wrong way. Uh, in this tutorial, you will learn to change train ends. Close each window to continue and before, per before performing instructions. Easy for me to say. When a train reaches the end of the line, it must turn around and head back the other way. To accommodate this, modern trains have a driving cab at both ends to save having to physically turn the whole thing around. Well, that makes sense. Our train has just arrived into the station and we're at the buffers. To head back the other way, we must change ends. Do this now by pressing Control and plus or minus on the keyboard. So, control. Oh, I gotta close this window. Then control minus. Ha ha. Well, that was easy. All right, back to the menu. We're going to couple and uncouple. Now, the last time I did this, I slammed into the other car with the, uh, the, whatever that, uh, thing was called on the Fowler, I, there was just no way to make it slow. Okay, in this tutorial, you'll learn about coupling and uncoupling. During busy periods, trains are extended in length to provide more seats. 
To do this, several matching trains are coupled together. Modern trains feature automatic coupling systems, but you must be careful. We don't want to damage the trains and put the whole service out of action. This train's already in the yard with another train just ahead. Pull forward at no more than 5 miles per hour and stop just before your train touches the one ahead. Okay. Uh, we're going to put it in forward. Oops, let's use the real controls. Put it in forward and take the brake off and apply a very low throttle. This may take a minute. Let's go a little bit faster. I don't want to bore you guys. Let's see how much faster we can go without putting ourselves in danger. I think that's probably fast enough. Since it's quickly approaching. Alright, and stop. Uh oh, we lost a point for emergency brake. Alright. Now pull forward again at no more than one mile per hour until both trains touch and there's a clunk sound. Okie dokie. Here we go. Alright, how about half a mile an hour? Alright, we done it. We done did it. Some rail lines are similar to the branches of a tree. As service continues along the line, it may split, with different parts heading to different destinations. Let's uncouple from the train. Select a view that allows you to see the join between the two trains. Alright, I think, if I remember right, that's six. Okay, and that's not the right place. We need to apply some brakes. Whoop. I just lost points again. Alright, let's see. We are going to disconnect here, I believe. Congratulations, you have uncoupled from the front train, and this concludes the coupling tutorial. I have to close the box. <laughs> All right, uh, Academy. Let's see how much more there is. Objectives. Stopping at a station. All right. At low speed. All righty, let's give this a go. You'll learn how to stop at a station at low speed. Close each message box to continue. All right, let's see. Stopping at the right place on a platform is crucial. When, started, when to start braking is judged by the weight and speed of your train. It's also important not to be heavy on the brakes to avoid passengers falling over. Yeah, that's the worst. The aim should be to apply one brake force all the way to a complete stop for a smooth ride. One brake force. This train is approaching the station at 25 miles per hour. It is only a small two-car train, so it won't take much to stop. When you reach the end of the platform, apply braking notch number two. Are we on one? Whoop. Now apply braking notch two. Okay. Hmm. 
you've stopped the train perfectly. Eh. Have I? Have I really? <laughs> I, I, I don't think the scenario got that right. I wonder if we should try it again. Well, I'll practice that later. Alright, let's see. Loading passengers. Okie doke. Let's go. In this tutorial, you will learn to stop at a station and then pick up passengers. It is assumed that you've already played the previous tutorial. Okay. Let's see if we can stop better this time. When you stop at a station, you're responsible for opening the doors, thereby allowing passengers to board. We're once again approaching at 25 miles an hour. Bring the train to a stop as before. All right, let's see if I can do a better job this time. Approaching into the platform and all right, let's see. Nicely done. Let's see what we actually did. Come on, let me have my cameras. All right, switch to an external view and then simply click the platform. Oh, that was close. All right, click the platform. All right, we've successfully loaded the passengers and apparently that tutorial is done. All right, back to Academy, uh, to the selection window, and let's see the safety systems. All right, let's get started. Whoa! Seems like it's going faster. I wonder what... Uh, so there was a pop-up that said DSD system. Ah, there we go. This tutorial will teach you about the DSD check safety system. Driving a train is an important job. A moving train with no driver is very dangerous. To ensure the train is still in safe hands, a system regularly checks you are still at the controls. Makes sense. On this train, it's called the driver safety device. If you don't respond to the alarm, the train will assume you are not at the controls and automatically apply the brakes. You only get a few seconds to respond, so stay alert. It's already moving, so after about 40 seconds, the DSD alarm will sound. Yep. We're moving. There certainly isn't any kind of decent scenery here in the uh, in the academy. Oh, look at that! Uh, choking. Oh no, electric shock. Let's play with the horn. DSD is. Checking you're still at the controls. Confirm this by clicking the AWS Acknowledge button. I wonder if that's Q on the keyboard. I heard that it might be. What does it want me to do now? 
wonder if I'm going to get to hit that button again. Alright, here we go. Coming up on the end. It really does look like I should apply the brakes. Congratulations. Okay, it was Q. I tapped the Q key that time. We maintain control of the train. Excellent. And scenario completed. It looks like it applied the brakes for me. Oh, man. I was going to wait and see if it ran into the... Whatever that thing is called. I forget. All right, back to Academy. And... We are going to go to the AWS automatic warning system and hit start. It's definitely moving faster this time. Let's learn about the automatic warning system. Checking the state of approaching signals requires the driver's attention as well as to be looking down the track at the moment the signal is passed. The driver needs to be aware of many things occurring while driving. To aid with the attention to signals, UK trains are equipped with the advanced warning system. A sensor is placed on the track approximately 186 meters in advance of every signal. As the train passes over the sensor, a sound is triggered in the cab. This sound reminds the driver that a signal is approaching and they must look out for it. To aid the driver still further, the sound triggered in the cab is different depending on whether the signal ahead is showing the restrictive or passive aspect. This helps the driver know if they are expecting to take action as a result of the approaching signal. When the AWS sound, excuse me, when the AWS sound is related to a restrictive aspect, the driver is required to acknowledge their awareness of it. This requires pressing a button in the cab. As with the DSD, only a short time is given for the driver to react before the train brakes are automatically applied for safety reasons. Respond to the two AWS alerts as your train crosses the sensors. Alright. Look for the sensor. All right, the AWS reset button. Ah, the same one. All right. And there should be one about there. By the way, that was scrolling on the mouse, uh, the mouse wheel that did that. All right, here it comes at the end of the platform. You have successfully responded to the AWS alerts. This concludes the. Wow, easy for me to say. This concludes the tutorial on the AWS. Scenario completed. All right, let's see what else we have to go. Ah, whoa! We did two aspect signals and three aspect signals on the Fowler 4F. Now we're going to come up against four aspect signals. Um, but first, let's knock out the two and three, because I bet they're different. All right. In this scenario, you will learn about hone, hone or home, and distance signals. When more than one train operates on a railway line, they must be separated to uh, to prevent collision. Railway lines are split into blocks, and only one train is permitted into a block at any time. Entry into each block is controlled by a signal. In their most basic form, signals show stop or go. 
indicated by the colors red or green. These are known as two aspect home signals. Alright. With the winding nature of railways and traveling at higher speeds, it is not always possible to see the signal far enough ahead in order to stop if it so shows red. Thus, we need a warning. Okay. So, there's a yellow and a red. Oh, no, yellow and a green. Second type of two aspect color light signal exists that features yellow and green lights. This is a two aspect distant signal and is seen on the approach to the home type. By displaying a yellow light, the driver will know to slow down and stop at the next signal. The signal is now green, so your train is clear to depart. This concludes the explanation of two aspect signals. All right, let's see what three looks like. Let's learn about three aspect color light signaling. As the speed limit increase, nope, start over. As speed limits increase, the, the warning of the approaching signal needs to be further in advance. This means that the warning signal, signal can end up being in the same location as the previous stop signal. To be economical, the two are combined into one signal featuring three lights, red, yellow, and green. These signals are able to indicate three situations. Oops. Watch the signal ahead as the train in front pulls into the distance. Red, stop the next block, is occupied. Yellow, warning, the next signal is at red. Okay. Can't see the signals. Aha. And green. Ah, it switches to red. Green, clear. The next signal is at clear or warning. The signal is now green, so your train is clear to depart. This concludes the explanation of three aspect color light signals. Okay. And now to get really confusing, we're going to do our last tutorial of the day, four aspect signals. All right, let's learn about four aspect color light signaling. As train speeds increase still further, signals must be spaced far enough apart for the driver to safely stop the train after passing a warning aspect. However, this distance can begin to impact the number of trains able to travel along the line in any given time frame. This is called line capacity. In order to maintain a high line capacity, a fourth light was added to the three aspect signal. This fourth light is also yellow and is used in conjunction with the other yellow light on the signal. Okay. But what does it mean? Watch the signal ahead as the train in front pulls into the distance. Red stop, the next block is occupied.
Yellow warning, the next signal is at red. Is this our train or the next train? This must be the next train. Yellow 2, preliminary warning. The next signal is at warning. Okay. Alright. Green, clear. The next signal is at clear or warning. Alright, the signal's clear. Uh, green, so your train is clear to depart. And that is it. We have finished all of the tutorials for the Class 170 Diesel Multiple Unit. Thank you for joining me today, rail fans, uh, for another episode of Train Simulator with Electron. Uh, I will see you next time.